Hi, we're back at Connie's Kitchen, and today we have a guest. Now, you, everybody who watches that OCTV knows Pauline <laughs> Bennett. Pauline and I are friends for many years now. Yes, it's been quite a few. It has. All started with my husband's crush. And <laughs> Pauline's so. also, <laughs> also a volunteer at Free Meals. So I asked her to come up and be a special guest today. So here she is. This is my pleasure, because when Connie cooks, it's like... She can just create something really fantastic to, out of the basic ingredients. Well, thank you. And you make it look so simple. Well, it has to be fun. Yeah. If it's not so fun, I'm, I'm there's excited. no point in it. What are we going to make? We're going to make marinated kind of a margarita-style chicken kebabs over orzo. Now, this I started early. This is just a shot of tequila, and I threw in some fire-roasted onions because I wanted to get them softened up a little bit so we can build our marinade. So what I want you okay. to do, if you would is let's get the marinade going. There's some lemon. You need to squeeze some lemon and some lime and zest them in there, and then we'll okay. season. And I'm going to start cutting the chicken. As a matter of fact, I think we'll just do these mighty. Have you seen chicken breasts lately? These are insane. Oh, they're huge. I know. They're insane. And I've do already you like got... heavy zest or light? You know, it's all to taste. When you think there's enough, there's probably enough. Okay. I'm easy. So the chicken, I've already washed it beforehand. And because I want it to cook quickly, I'm not going to have huge hunks. So I'm going to cut it down. And as we go, I'll throw it right in the bowl there. And then after you've zested a bit, then use the juicer there to juice some lemon Do juice. Do you want zest lime mm -hmm. zest too? Oh, yeah. Oh, that smells so good. Oh, it does. Oh, it's so fresh. Now, see, this. there's some meat in here, but it's kind of fatty, so I'm going to... I'm going to toss that. It's nice to smell this and some of that garlic. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and the garlic set out early and it's getting a little strong. Well, that's, I mean, we won't use that much. We'll use very little. But it's a visual thing. So I already have these skewers soaking. I have wood skewers. Usually at home I use metal skewers because I like the way it conducts the heat through the meat. But I thought I would try the wooden skewers. So I've got them soaking already because it... If they're wet, they tend not to burn and they tend not to stick. At least that's the theory, and I'm going with it. So, oh, that smells good. Mm -mm. So do you like cooking with me, Pauline? Oh, I do. I enjoy meals and the, pro the end product. It just amazes me how simple these are to make, but yet they, they just look like something that you would find in a high-end restaurant. Well, thank you. Treetop Lodge, high-end high dining. <laughs> So it's really easy, get a nice sharp knife, these chicken breasts are very easy to cut down and I'm doing pretty much everything to bite size so it'll grill quickly and also then you're not pulling it off the skewer and having to cut it. The whole idea of shish kebabs is basically finger food so that's the way we want to get that going. And We are going to throw some of that garlic in there. So the okay. marinade is going to be, as I said, the tequila will add a little bit more, not a lot, but the tequila gives a flavor and then it cooks off while you're grilling so it's not a overly alcoholic taste because tequila is good but cooked tequila is not so good but it will leave its flavor behind how long did you marinate the chicken for? Oh, you know 15 minutes will do it okay um, you can do it overnight if you seal the container depends on if you're prepping a lot you want to get it done ahead of time um, but 15 minutes basically, especially when I'm cutting the pieces this small. Maybe a little too small, but that's all right too. Again, trim that other stuff away. I don't know if you noticed, but back here behind me we have a little visitor. I don't know his name yet, but he came over to visit from the alpaca farm next door. And okay, he's, he's, um, he's not you know a running around the pasture type alpaca. Can but he's very cute. Them? Yes, please. Ooh, look at that. Oh. You know, that's the one thing you guys miss by watching this on TV is the smells. Because it smells so fresh. Now, it does. you can. Does. I, the produce didn't look great, so I didn't pick up any parsley or anything. But you can throw parsley in this marinade, too, which is also nice and fresh. All right, now there should be a yellow pepper in there. Yes. And again... Get this stuff out of your way. There's a, there's a garbage bowl. I just need you to cut it into chunks, like bite-sized chunks. Do you have a smaller one that I could core? Do you want the paring knife? 
This will work. Thank you. <laughs> All right, so while she's doing that, I'm going to add just a touch of the garlic. We don't want any one thing to be overpowering. I'm going to add a touch more of the tequila. Because the original, as I said, the original tequila I had in the bowl was just to uh, reconstitute the fire roasted onions. It brings up this wonderful fiery, not spicy fiery, but like off a of fire taste. A little bit of sugar, for some reason it always takes the edge off. Our Himalayan salt, our black pepper, and I think since we already had garlic, we don't need any more powdered garlic. You can throw those right in here. Now the vegetables won't soak up the marinade quite as much, but that's all right. Oh, it smells smell. really good. Yes. Isn't that nice? Oh, you can smell all of it. I know it. I know it. All right. Oops, I'm sorry. While you're doing that, I'm going to start the tomatillos. Now, I've used these before, and the reason I'm using them today is they really soak up a marinade nicely. And I've never put tomatillos on a shish kebab before or a skewered thing, but that's what we're going to do. What else do you want to do? The tomatoes? Um, red onion. Got to have some red onion. Okay. It would not be a Connie's Kitchen meal without red onion. So now, do you add sugar to a lot of your dishes? When I want to take the edge off, when it's all savory, mm -hmm. especially now this is going to go on the grill, so it's going to get that, uh, that grilled flavor. Mm -hmm. So I put it just a touch. So we're going to finish chopping and getting this ready. And when we come back, we're going to put them on the skewers. We might even take them outside to put them on the skewers and get the grill ready. And then we're going to cook them up. And I'm going to turn the water back on for the orzo. So we have that ready to go. Oh, I like the colors, too. Isn't that beautiful? The colors are coming nicely. See, that's why I chose the yellow pepper rather than green. I thought... Very nice. I uh, see. Look at that. That's going to be lunch today, folks. So give us a few minutes, and we'll be here, or we'll be outside. And today it isn't 16 degrees. Today it's actually nice and sunny outside, so we won't freeze outside. and we're outside and the grill's getting really hot. Um, it's just me standing behind it. Now I'm gonna instruct Pauline on okay. how to assemble her kebabs. So this kebab skewer is already soaked in water and it's just real freelance. Just kind of put them in there and rotate. Yeah. Okay. And, and at this point it's kind of about you know color and just make sure you get a good, good helping of chicken on there. There's nothing worse than a kebab that's got one piece of chicken and the rest is all vegetables. I like veggies. Well, yeah, if you do a veggie kebab. <laughs> and I do those also. But if you're doing a chicken kebab, you right. kind of want to get some, some extra stuff. Exactly. So see how pretty uh, those see. are? Get some more chicken on there. And as I said, we cut them kind of small so that they'll grow more quickly. Oh, do and you want more stuff on? See, this is a really good show that I popped cooking. in at. Because my grilling experience is like nil, <laughs> except for when's it ready? <laughs> so what's some key, what's some pointers for grilling? I always say hot. Get the grill hot because it'll cook faster depending on what you're cooking. Okay. Most everything I do and what we do on the show is always about preparing a good meal quickly. So we try to do that. Get the grill hot enough so that it's things can cook quickly thing. and not get a chance to dry out. Okay. One thing I forgot to mention... If you take a little bit of foil and put it around the tip here, it keeps the wood from burning, and then you don't get the burn taste in your food. Whoa! Oops. So I'll do that while Pauline assembles the, the kebabs, and then we'll talk about, we're talking about wine dinners. Uh, Pauline yes. attended a wine dinner a couple of weeks ago. What would you think? Oh, the food was amazing. The whole event was, was just awesome. Um, it was veal scallopini. This is the first time I ever tried veal. It was just something, you know, that I just never wanted to try. But it was absolutely delicious. Um, you actually could learn quite a bit about the different wines because it's a small group. 
So it's just very, very, it's very worthwhile to attend one of your dinners. The meals are exquisite. Oh, thank you. And it's fun. Yes. We have yes, a, yes. We have a lot of fun. We have another one <clears throat> coming up on June 14th. And then... What's that one going to be like? That one's grilling in the woods. We're actually going to do a different uh, kebabs, different okay. skewers. We're going to do chicken. We're going to do beef. We're going to do veggie kebabs because we always have vegetarian options for our, our wine dinners. So a lot of people have asked me, well, what if I don't eat meat? Well, just let me know in advance because we can, we can accommodate anyone. So aren't those pretty? These are really pretty and they're very easy to, to make. Now, how long would you say this has to stay on the grill? Really just a few minutes because, see, we're already starting to get some, some char on there. Now, and for those of us who are used to cooking indoors, how can you, how can you tell when your chicken is complete? Well, you want to make sure all the pink is gone, and this is really hot, so I'm not going to touch it, but if you touch it, it you want it to be firm. If it's at all squishy, then it's probably still pink on the inside. Okay. So, oh, that's starting to smell good, don't you think? Oh, it does. Now, one of the things, when you do a lot of grilling, they will tell you, don't use the reserved marinade because it's been sitting overnight or whatever. We just made that a few minutes ago, so we're going to go ahead and drizzle a little bit onto the grill while it's cooking. Once we get to that point, so I need and we got a little bit of fire going speed here. Speed it up, huh? Okay, you can stop assembling for now if you want. Okay. Oh, the smell. The aroma is great. There we go. So you can give those a turn. All righty. And I'm going to go around back here, where it's nice and hot. We're really making them work for it today. <laughs> <laughs> oh, these look delicious. They are, and I should have brought a spoon that wasn't slotted. <laughs> Just go ahead with what you're doing. Pay no attention to me. Okay, one of these Just fell off. That's all right. Leave it? Set it off to the side. Yeah, don't worry about it. You don't want to touch okay. those skewers now. So now how often do you rotate? Or you Just kind of eyeballing it. Okay. You're getting some nice grill marks. And remember, they're small pieces, so they're going to cook quickly. And then we're going to take them inside and cook up some orzo and spinach and make a bed of that and put the shish kebabs on top. So how do you think of that? Sounds delicious. Yeah. So you know this we've got a murder really coming good. up in July. I did see yep. that on your web page. Yep. So oh, now what's not the web page. We don't have a web page yet, but we're working on it. But oh, okay. Saw it on the Facebook page. Facebook. Yes. yes. Thank you. Yes. So we're gonna. I'm gonna kill one of my staff. I haven't decided yet who that's <laughs> gonna be. But that'll be fun. That'll be a full dinner, and. Um, Basically, it's all driven by the guests. I mean, we'll set out a basic outline of what's happened, but it's okay. going to be up to the guests to figure out how it happened and who did it and why. So that way everybody can be involved. It's not like you're just sitting at, you know, at a table watching a play or something. So you have to create almost a story mm -hmm. at the beginning anyway. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I think we'll probably kill someone, you know, like maybe during the appetizers. So then they have all through dinner to figure out. Start it right away. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, <laughs> definitely. Definitely. I like that. Yeah. That should be a grand event. And that's July 18th. Oh, and on June 28th, we have someone coming up to demonstrate and work with people on building fairy gardens. More which, about a fairy garden. What is a fairy it's garden? A, it's miniature. It's, well, it's where fairies live. Okay. So it's, it's all, everything done in miniature. And I'm talking miniature growing plants and all sorts of little buildings and it, wherever your imagination takes you, really. It is the coolest thing. And Mary Byberg Butkovich is coming out. She works for Michaels. And she's going to come out. We're going to spend the day and have a luncheon. And she's going to help everybody. Keep turning. Okay. Um, build their own dream fairy gardens. And I think that's, that's June 28th. So that's coming up this month. So give me a call. Which I'll tell you is 248-933-4579. You can always find us on Ouch. Facebook, Treetop Lodge Oxford. And you can email me at stormy3958 at att.net. And the website is getting closer all the time. I understand there are technical glitches, but like I said before, I'm a cook, so I don't deal with that. Nancy handles all that, so she's getting it figured out. So when we're done That'll here, we're going to take soon. these inside. And, uh, I'm losing pieces. That's fine, because you can pick them up. Okay. Yeah, so it's all good. Hi.
Hi everyone, I'm Julie Hogan, host of a new show called Let's Get Strolling. And what I do is I interview local businesses and interesting and fun people, sometimes event planners, sometimes the residents of Oxford, maybe next time it could be you. Join me next time on OCTV on Let's Get Strolling. We're back from the grill, and pa next? Pauline grilled. Yes, she grilled. <laughs> we're gonna while the water's coming up for the orzo, we are going to chop up some spinach, and it's very wet because I already washed it. Okay. So I kind of want to stand back, and we just want to make a bed, kind of like this. Just make a very fine bed. Sure. Because then we're gonna drop the hot orzo on top of it, and then we're gonna plate up. So what did you think? Did you enjoy grilling? I did. I did. And See, guys do all the grilling and they make you think it's so mysterious. It's not. It's not. <laughs> Here, it was pretty easy. There's our finished And product. now in the enclosed room, you can, the aroma of that, it's really popping. Yeah. I mean, it smells so delicious. Oh, good. Well, I'm going to get this orzo up. Oop. Okay. And we got to talk about, we have free meals next week. So we're going to be cooking. Yes. We're going to be cooking at the church next week. I still look forward to that. Gage suggested something summery like cold pasta salad and meatballs. Okay. Does that sound good? Sounds good to me. All right. But I won't put you in charge of grand biscuits. <laughs> now, why is that? Uh, you know, <laughs> well, oh, that's a big one. Yeah, I was going to grab the stem out of there. Whenever we do grand's biscuits, either they're undercooked or overcooked and... It's kind of become a joke around meals. We want it all in the center because I'm going to throw the orzo oh, right okay. on top of it. And I'll be back. Set up a couple plates while you're at it. Second. Oh, you want more? Yeah. Yeah. So in uh, weeks to come, we're going to do, we're outside now, so we're going to do a lot more grilling. We're going to do um, marinated flat iron steak. And chicken is easy. Chicken is, is inexpensive right now. You saw the size of that chicken breast. That was $1.98 a pound. So you can't beat that. Um, I'm putting the orzo in now. Orzo is pasta that looks like rice, if, in case you don't know. That's all it is. And that doesn't take but a moment to cook. So I'll get that going. So there's a lot of variations when it, when it comes to shish kebabs. As I said, like for the dinner, we're going to do something on this order. We're going to do beef, which is going to be marinated in Vidalia onion and Merlot. And we're going to do mm. all veggie. And I think I'm going to do that like with fresh orange juice, fresh orange zest, a bit of ginger, almost like an Asian inspired that for the veggie. That sounds really Does good. Does that sound good? Yes. Okay. Great choice. Yeah. So people have been asking me about doing cooking classes. And, you know, if you watch my show, that's kind of my cooking class. Yep. So this is a class. And we, it's simple. It is. But it the is. end product is going to look beautiful. Mm -hmm. And hopefully taste good. Yes. <laughs> That's the plan. That I have no doubt. Yeah. Okay, what's next? What's next is we wait for the orzo to come up, which is just going to take another moment or so. Orzo is fun because you think it's you think it's rice, but it's actually pasta. Okay. You probably much, had orzo. How much would you say is in there? A cup? More than a cup? You mean that I already threw in? Yes. I threw in about a cup just for Expedia here. Okay. You know, to get it moving. And I threw some salt in the water, of course. You've got to salt your water. When you're cooking, remember, when you're cooking pasta, you salt the water. Because if you yes. throw salt on your cooked pasta, you're going to taste salt. And you don't want that. You know, Correct. Just, unless you're like my husband and you treat salt as a side dish. <laughs> you know, there is that. Yeah, there's some people who do go well yeah. heavy on that salt. Yeah. But it does make a difference if it's in the water. Otherwise, yeah. it just, it's very bland. It is. It's very bland. Yeah. Especially nowadays, a lot of people are going to the whole wheat pastas and all those types of things. And they don't have an awful lot of flavor. You really need to season them. But again, if you're seasoning them before, you know, while you're cooking it, you don't use as much. Mm -hmm. And if you use the Himalayan salt, like I've been using, the pink Himalayan What's salt. What's the difference? You know, there's, I've probably got 15 different salts in the, in the pantry now. And it's just, it's like a rock salt. Okay. And it's not iodized like regular table salt is. And it's got, if you taste just a little bit, it's got so much flavor that you don't use as much. If you're looking for that salt flavor, you can just use so a lot use less. So you use less, but, use a lot but less. it has more flavor. It does, and, and no chemicals in it. 
Very nice. Yeah. That's another subject I was going to say is that your meals are so quick, they look great, taste great, but the best part is that it's, it's not processed. You use all fresh ingredients. As much as we can. Sometimes we run into a situation, let me throw some pea pods on here. Oh, that's a great idea. Sometimes we run yeah. into a situation where, um, you know, something isn't available. So mm -hmm. we might use canned tomatoes or something, but for the most part, it's fresh. And I do use the tubes of herbs. <laughs> I've used those on a lot of shows. They're great because, especially in the winter when the fresh herbs aren't looking all that oh, good, yes. and you want to be able to add that flavor. You do have to improvise at you times. You do. So, but for the most part, yeah, it's... Like it's, today, everything is fresh. Yeah, everything is fresh. So I'm going to drain off that. The orzo doesn't take long at all, three okay. or four minutes. So I'm going to go ahead and drain that off. Now, are these recipes that you've had, or is this something that... I you make change? It up. I make it up oh, as I go along. Yeah, okay. I make it up as I go along. That's why so when that's people... your creative side. I guess. Yeah. I guess. I hope so. That's why it's hard for me to give people recipes. It's not like I'm trying to hold back, but I seriously never do things the same way twice. So now we're going to put some of that orzo right on the plate, oh, and that that'll start nice. to steam down our greens. Look at that greens, how fresh. Very nice. And remember, we always save the stems for my guinea pig. You have quite a bit in there. That's good. That makes her very happy. <laughs> and I think these have cooled off a bit, but we still get the point. And then you can you could slide them off the skewer to serve if you want, but it makes kind of a pretty. Yeah, I like that serve. presentation. Yeah, with the whole kebab, yes. And that, my friend, is lunch. Beautiful. What do you think? And my tummy say it. I'm hungry. Say, I know. Mine is too. <laughs> mine is too. Well, go ahead. Taste something. It is beautiful. Here's a fork for you. Oh, thank See, you. See, I usually don't taste on camera, but I love it when I have somebody here. <laughs> so I'm going to make the mess, huh? No, it's not making a mess. We'll see. This is awfully big piece. Yeah. I'm going to go with the smaller piece. I mean, who was chopping the peppers? Me. <laughs> I love it that you're here with that me That was today. for Kyle, though. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> Kyle does love his veggies. Mmm. Is the marinade coming through? Oh, the flavor is delicious. Oh, good. We have to try the got to try the chicken. And they always say, don't eat with your mouth full. I mean, That's don't right. talk with your mouth full. But we can do that here. In County's Kitchen, the rules are a lot more relaxed. <laughs> we don't That's have clocks. That's a good thing. And uh, mm. is it good? Is it tender? And you cooked it. Delicious. Good. The flavor is just awesome. Oh, it's delicious. And you saw how quick. I mean, it was on the grill probably six to eight minutes total. Now, part of that is because we cut them so small. Okay. And the veggies, the nice part of that is if you cut the veggies a little larger, they're going to char a little bit, but they're still going to be really firm and crunchy and crispy. And that's what you want. You have to try some of the tomatillo. There you go. Okay. Thank you. This is another first. Pauline is going to try tomatillo. A lot of firsts here today. Well, that's what we try to do. That's different. Mm-hmm. It tastes really good, but it's, it's crunchy almost. Yeah, and on its own, it has almost no flavor, but it absorbs flavor really. I was nice. expecting more or less something like the tomato, but it's not. Mm -mm. It's really good. Mm hmm I like. So there you go. We what made a lunch. wonderful lunch. Come back and join us again here at Treetop Lodge in Connie's Kitchen. Pauline, thanks for being here today. Thanks for having me, Connie. Oh, it was my pleasure. And we'll have her back again, and we'll do something else that you've never done before. So we'll see you soon. In the meantime, enjoy, be nice to one another, and we're going to have lunch. <laughs>
economic stability. Oakland County residents and businesses have invested in preserving nearly 7,000 acres of parkland. Since 1966, 13 parks and golf courses have been acquired, maintained, and improved. Oakland County parks and facilities are made possible by millage funds supported by Oakland County residents. For a home valued at $200,000, the homeowner pays less than $25 per year to support the Oakland County parks. With every generation, families create lifelong memories at Oakland County's award-winning parks. From exciting summer escapades and stories around the campfire, to brisk fall walks on wooded trails and snowy winter outings, the outdoors beckons year-round. It's time to get up, get out, and get going at the Oakland County Parks. Active recreation options abound. Cross-country ski or mountain bike on tree-lined trails. Scale the rock climbing wall. Get your kicks with soccer at several sports fields. Row or paddle a boat on four picturesque inland lakes. It's an easy journey. Most parks are just a short drive away. A quick tip, all our parks and golf courses end in Oaks. To find your favorite, just go to DestinationOakland.com. Click to pick Oceans of Motion Water Parks at Red Oaks and Waterford Oaks, the Wint Nature Center at Independence Oaks, Teen Adventures, and even Entertainment to Go. When outdoor adventures on your list, there's fishing, beaches, boating, playgrounds, and seasonal hunting. The campgrounds at Addison Oaks and Groveland Oaks feel like being up north with plenty of recreation options. Want to get fit? Hit the trails. Oakland County Parks boasts more than 68 miles for strolling, walking, hiking and running, biking, or horseback riding. If the links are your lure, Five golf courses, including premier course Lion Oaks, are conveniently located. Make Glen Oaks or White Lake Oaks your home course, get an up north feel at Springfield Oaks, or play a quick nine at Red Oaks. Our recreation lineup rocks. Learn to swim, experience an outdoor adventures camp, take the fast track at BMX, or gain new lifelong skills. Everyone's included. Individuals with disabilities participate in dozens of adaptive opportunities, including a new fully accessible playscape, modified golf carts, and annual events. There's always something special going on at Oakland County Parks, whether it's a classic car show, the Oakland County Fair, a senior golf tournament, or the Ellis Barn Festival. Being green is an everyday practice with nature interpretive programs, wildlife habitat protection, reduction of invasive species, and stormwater management. Your responses to surveys indicate that you want more trails. The Oakland Trails Advisory Council was established to coordinate trail systems and seek grant sources for future trail construction. You also said that maintaining and refurbishing existing facilities is a high priority, as well as continuing exceptional quality service standards. Oakland County Parks serves an increasingly diverse population of all abilities, ages, interests, ethnic backgrounds, and cultures. The needs of lifelong residents, as well as newcomers, are carefully considered when planning parks and programs. Oakland County Parks and Recreation pledges to create community by providing places to meet, play, and learn. Observe environmental responsibility with natural resources stewardship and enhance fiscal sustainability based on a business model of effective and efficient operation. During the last decade, the Parks Commission has purchased 297-acre Highland Oaks acquired Catalpa Oaks, an urban park in Southfield, added new campsites and cabins at Addison Oaks, opened dog parks at Orion Oaks and Lion Oaks, relocated and reconstructed the historic Ellis Barn at Springfield Oaks, 
and built a universally accessible playground at Waterford Oaks. 